Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This time I will be talking about the lists that we will be using in the Unlikely Allies event for Bloodstorm this weekend. So Saturday the 27th in Eindhoven in the Netherlands we will be playing another Bloodstorm event. I'm just scrolling a little bit through the uh, format. Okay, I can point this out. So we are playing in a team format with two armies per team. And the army points are up to a maximum of 1500 points per army list, so we have 3000 points per side. Uh, we will be building our armies with the warband rules, and we will use the warband flux cards, which is a bit toned down magic. Um, now what we're going to do is we build the battlefield, uh, well basically the staff will do that. And then we determine the deployment type, and we determine the secondary objective. This is always way different from the uh, general... Um, secondary objectives that you can find in Night Age. In addition, we have a couple of extra rules. So we are basically teammates, but that is not always the case here in Bloodstorm. Um, so each game, each team will have five objective points which can be used uh, to lift one of or more of the restrictions. Everybody, uh, Every point not spent will count towards the total objective points scored in the game. Um, so, I generally would expect people to not spend any points and just keep the points. Um, but the things you can do, the secondary objectives normally are random, you can spend a point to choose it. Uh, you can, everybody loses commanding presence, you can spend a point to gain it again. Um, everybody loses rally around the flag, you can gain it again by an objective point. Um, the armies will treat each other as enemy units for the purpose of, of march tests. <laughs> and that is also without an inspiring presence and without rally around the flag, unless you spend points to negate that. Um, so you can spend a point to, um, to negate that. And then magic-wise, you can still negate something. And we still have that all units in the armies are subject to animosity which is that for every unit at the start of the turn, you roll a dice, and on a 1 they don't really do anything, and on a 6 they go crazy, basically. Um, you can ignore that for 3 points, but that is quite a lot. So it's it's going to be a, a special event in that, turn, in that, in that way. Uh, so then we have the first one we deploy as margin columns, and then, so you roll a d3, and then um, you decide which secondary you have. Primary is the whole the center of the table, basically. Uh, so otherwise, you have to either kill a character, I think. You have to uh, have multiple combats with units from both allies. Or you have to have no units within certain distance of your ally. And, uh, well, basically, the entire... Uh, event pack is filled with stuff like that. So let's look at the army lists. Uh, there's a total of, I believe, 10 teams. Yeah, it's 10 teams. So 20 players in total. Five tables at a single, uh, at any given time. Um, so we have Bram and Matt. They're playing Orcs and Goblins and Infernal Dwarfs. I think Matt is playing the Orcs and Goblins here and Bram the Infernal Dwarfs, but I might be wrong. Uh, so the Goblins list is just a Goblin list, basically, without any Orcs. Uh, you have a General with Dharma and the Goblin Gardens, which is it's the type of thing that it becomes a bit stronger, I think, at lower point values, because basically you affect the entire table. Um, we have less units on the table, so maybe it is less strong, actually, uh, because you have less stuff going through, but maybe it's it's independent of size. <laughs> He is on a Gagantula with a great weapon and an attack, Nasher, and a Nasher Whistle. I think the Nasher Whistle lets you re-roll charges, uh, which is going to be quite useful with the unit of Nashers and the unit of Nasher Dashers. Um, I think it's a nice little uh, themed list. <laughs> I am missing a little bit just a big block of, uh, of just fruit goblins in order to make it uh, a bit more themed, maybe. Um, but it is uh, quite nice, obviously. 15 Nashers is something to be scared of at these point levels, and a wrecking team, 
as well. Um, and then in addition, you still have the Gargantula. So that's that's going to be quite interesting to see if if people actually brought stuff to trade with a racking team or if uh, the racking team is going to rack quite a lot. And then we pair it up with Infernal Dwarfs. Uh, I don't really know if the combination Goblins Infernal Dwarfs is a particular strong one, but I think most players here uh, came to just have a fun event anyway. Infernal Dwarf list is quite varied with a Lamassu Scholar, so this site also takes some. It, it mostly takes the magic because the demagogue is not the, the witch character. Um, so the magic goes mostly to the Infernal Dwarfs, I guess. Uh, and then we have the Toro Commissioner, who's gonna probably gonna go into the Toro Anointed, I think. I think that is the, the base size. Uh, then we have the Vassal Levies, sac Shackled Slaves, Shackled Slaves, it's just 30 Wounds of Resilience 4, which is quite a good value at these point levels as well. And the Tarragon Forces with Resilience 5 is also just solid. Um, I think they have quite a lot of solid choices in their lists, and I, I'm looking forward to them making them work, basically. Um, one thing that might become an issue is that the goblins are going to try to go everywhere, I would imagine. Or at least you want to spread them out probably along your uh, list. And if you have to ignore your commanding presence um, and also have to take much tests for your ally, then that might uh, give you some trouble. But we will see what will happen. Now we have Jan and Mario. I'll make it a bit bigger for you guys, by the way. Uh, Jan and Mario, so they have Infernal Dwarves again, and they have Dwarf Nolt. This Infernal Dwarf list is a bit different, um, so I think in Warbands you are supposed to have three units at minimum in your list. This is a bit of a cheeky variant of that, because the Infernal Bastion is a different unit, but it will deploy in the Infernal Dwarves. Uh, Infernal Warriors, I expect. I think that is, yeah, that should just be allowed, right? So we have a Prophet, Prophet of Lugar, Wizard added on Pyromancy. I would say that generally Pyromancy is not the strongest lore, um, especially if you want to just pump your entire magic phase into it. But then again, you have... Um, uh, the, the units of your ally are not going to be affected by it um, because of the magic world. But you have Flaming Swords and you have the uh, minus one to wound spell. Um, so basically you have plus one and minus one to wound. Don't know if it's worth it. But um, otherwise you just go for some damage and if you have, for example, a lot of Dread Elves in the format, then uh, Pyromancy will definitely pay off. Infernal dwarf, Dwarfs with a shield and a Blunderbuss with an Infernal Bastion. This is, this is going to be also probably holding the... no, it's not going to hold in general, but you have a unit of like 700 points that is going to be really difficult to shift for people. Uh, with Resilience 4, 3 of armor save, static combat dress for days at this format, it's it's going to be a good one. Then the Disciples of Lugar, I think generally great weapons is the choice to go for because the bad weapons, they, they give you extra attacks, sure, um, but the extra strength is... your agility is not high enough anyway. Um, Banner of Speed, so you go to March, how does that work again? So they have Advanced 4, they have March 12 standard, and then they go to March 14 inches. Basically this is a cavalry unit by then. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is, uh, that's quite a nifty unit. Um, it's going to be the fastest unit in the entire uh, combined roster. The Dwarf Nolts, they have a very combat-focused list, just like the Infernal Dwarves. I have quite a lot of respect for the fact that these two together did not bring a single war machine. Um, even though they did bring some shooting, but then again, can you really hold that against them? Uh, with so many Dwarves on the table, there has to be some shooting. Um, so the Dwarf Nolts list, I really like it because there's a lot of variety in the different units. Uh, I also made this... Uh, in my previous video, I made a list with like three units of deep watch with things in there, and I already went crazy with all the different options you have. But this is a very nice uh, balanced list, I feel. Uh, then we go to Wout and Yaroon with Orcs and Goblins and Empire of Sun style. Um, so, with some armies, you have these, these items that can be really influential and impactful. 
um, at these point levels, like for example, uh, one up uh, save Knight Commander with Light of Swan style, I would say would be very impressive at this point level. Um, this is not in this list, so I am quite happy about that. Then again, the Marshal with Hand Weapon Death Warrant is gonna result in quite a lot of hits there, especially with Great Weapon and Imperial Guard. So what is likely gonna happen um, at these point levels? It's way more difficult to uh, to account for counter charges in Empire. So probably the Prelate and the Marshal are both gonna be in the Imperial Guard. Imperial Guard's gonna get charged. The heavy infantry will counter charge. Marshal gets to strike before uh, the heavy infantry and the Imperial Guard. Um, if he does one single hit at least with a reroll uh, on his two hit roll because of the prelate, if he does one single hit, every attack from the heavy infantry and the Imperial Guard is going to have battle focus. Um, so, with the heavy infantry getting fight an extra rank because of the support rule and the Imperial Guard getting some fight an extra rank because they have an order on them, probably. Uh, you're going to look at a horde formation of Imperial Guard, maybe. I probably just uh, deployed four ranks, so six white, I guess. Uh, it's going to be 19 attacks with battle focus and great weapons and hatred, so 19 strength six hit. Uh, that's going to be uh, quite hurtful, and then still 16 uh, battle focus strength four hit attacks, I should say. Um, yeah, that's going to be quite a lot of damage. Um, the only thing is that you have to be able to pull off the counter charge and your opponent has to enable you to do so. Um, so yeah, this this army really wants to take a corner or a chunk of the board. Just deploy there with the heavy infantry imperial guard. So basically you're just putting 1250 points on one side of the table and then you want to make that little trick work. Against some people it will work, against some other people it uh, might not work. Also in the end, 28 Imperial Guard, it's still resilience 3 bodies with a 4 of armor save. Um, so we will see how quickly they get whittled down. Uh, then we have the Orcs and Goblins here, they have a Wyvern, uh, which is quite cool at this point level. 15 Feral Orc Marauders, I would say that this is even more scary. Um, the only thing which I find a little bit strange is that there's Goblin Reavers here now in the list and not another unit of Orcs or anything to get in combat. I think the Great Green Idol also counts for Blood Rivalry. Blood, blood. The Rivalry thing where you trigger the extra attacks, but you really want to trigger these extra attacks on the Feral Orcs. Um, and <laughs> this is just, this is one of these units that are just way too wacky for this, this format, I would say. Um, because they come in and they, well, they, if they strike first, then they strike first with, is it 15 attacks? Is it more? 20 attacks? Something. With battle focus, with strength uh, 5 on the charge, I think, AP1. And then, yeah, that, that'll hurt already quite a lot of units. Um, so I'm, I'm quite excited and curious to see how this will uh, this will draw out. I think it's a cool combination. Um, might miss a couple of small units because if I, if I regard the Empire list as a break of like 1250 points with just an extra unit of electoral cavalry, then I would say that they they would have needed um, a bit of an extra small unit to support the, the list. But then again, the uh, Yorks and the Goblin or the Orcs and the humans together, they will uh, make for a great alliance. Then we have bottom floors, uh, so we have orcs and goblins. <laughs> so that is obviously the best thing to do in a team tournament. We have one list with the orcs, one list with the goblins. Uh, the orc warlord is also on wyvern. Apparently, wyvern is a popular choice in this uh, in this setup. Um, but who doesn't want a mobile uh, piece with resilience five, four wounds, uh, two of armor save, one of armor save? Who knows? Um, then the 10 veteran orc marauders who are gonna have a big boss pull so they will have rally around the flag i believe because this is the bsb pull if i'm right and that would mean that 
Uh, I don't think it can be the BSP. No, I don't think so, because then it becomes a special unit, so never mind. That doesn't work. Uh, 20 Iron Ox, <laughs> also do a lot of damage. Iron Ox Chariot. This is just damage in a, <laughs> in a closed package. And then, obviously, the goblins are going to be there for the ranged support, or, well, the, the quasi-ranged support. I would call Mad Kids ranged support, I would call Nasher's ranged support, <laughs> to be honest. But also a very fluffy um, ambushing unit of neophytes that are just going to come on the board from the side. I like that the, the sizes of these units are also not the, the optimal tournament sizes that you see everywhere. Like the 10 Goblin Reavers is too uh, bigger than the minimum core requirement unit size. 32 Goblin Rabble doesn't seem big enough to really hold out, but it also seems bigger than the minimum minimum unit size of 25, I think, or 30, I don't know. Um, I think it's a cool combination with the Orcs being really, really simple and just really ahead on. Um, no discussion there. And the Goblins, a little bit more finesse in the Army Builder, um, but just a lot of uh, interesting choices. Then we have the Drunken Lions, Kun and Daniel, playing Warriors of the Dark Gods and Ogre Cannons. Um, I would expect these armies to be the armies with the least amount of models. Uh, so we have in this list a total of 16 models and in this list a total of 11. I thought that I might be on the small side, side in, in unit size with uh, or army size with 13 models, but apparently 11 models was the value to beat. <laughs> um, so the Warriors, they have a Wasteland Beam of and uh, some other stuff. I was just trying to figure out how many really big models were there, because I saw the Wasteland Beam of, I saw the Rock Our Rocks. Those are two very scary models at these point levels. Um, the Wasteland Beam of, a bit less than the, the Rock Our Rocks, but at these point levels, people generally don't um, don't invest in uh, chaff too much. So something like a Rock or Ox or Wild Huntsman or any other glass cannon units are going to be really, really good um, at just dealing with enemy threats. We have some uh, some magic in the form of a Wizard out of Alchemy that can always provide the very useful Word of Iron. Now we have 10 Sloth Warriors, Feldrax, uh, Ratchet One, Single Ratchet One, gotta love it. Um, and then in the other list we still have also the Fort Tuscal Cavalry with the Banner of Speed. They are definitely going to do quite some damage on their own. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, this is quite a, a decent combat load out there. Um, and I'm quite curious to see how much carnage this is going to give. And we have Rico and Paul. I think this is the only team with any supplement army um, being played. So we have uh, Ogre Khans again. Um, it's a very nifty use of the Banner of Discipline to circumvent the, the fact that you cannot use Hold the Ground because Banner of Discipline just gives you a flat out reroll on panic tests. Um, Frost Mammoth. Uh, would I go Frost Mammoth or would I go Rock Our Rocks? I think I would go Rock Our Rocks. Uh, but then again, the Frost Mammoth is nearly half the points of the, of the uh, Rock Our Rocks. And this is quite juicy, especially also in combination with Dreadfleet. Uh, because Dreadfleet really wants to hit first. And the Frost Mammoth is going to uh, enable that as long as you don't mind being much blocked by your own units <laughs> um yeah i think this combination can also work quite well the dread mariners dread mariners strat dread guys <laughs> um i think they punch quite above their their expected um, limit i don't have that much experience with the corsairs um, of dread fleet specifically i know that then the the borders they get Heavy armor, I think, or plate armor, yeah, something like they have a four of four of armor save, I think. Um, but I would have to see how much damage this actually does. Uh, I believe Rico has been playing with Dreadfleet 
for some time now. So you might have let Monoda in and out a bit better than me. Um, but yeah, we will see uh, what's going to happen there. I think it's an interesting combination. Now we have the lists of myself and Lars. Um, so my previous Bloodstorm, I told myself that the next time I would be bringing as many trees as I could. And I did manage to put in as many trees as I could. <laughs> um, so I tried to also just keep the model count, count down, um, bringing an avatar of nature and a tree father, which is already two trees. Um, and then basically I rounded it up with the uh, the most expensive core that I could find for model. Um, and I thought it fun to, to just make them heath hunters and then give them ambush so that at the start of the game I will just have three models on table. And uh, yeah, Lars could also laugh about this quite a bit. And um, he supplements it with a, uh, a bit more conventional Dwarven Holds list. I think with the only artillery pieces that we have seen so far, so yeah, I'm, I'm really curious how this is going to work out. Uh, Scoring-wise, my list kind of sucks, but I do have two three men, so I'll I'll see how that goes. Um, and yeah, Lars is will uh, he will supply me with this scoring that we as a team desperately need. Um, yeah, I think we have a combination that is uh, quite decent um, in performance. But with these random scenarios, you never know what you um, what you're gonna get yourself into. The only thing I know is that if my opponent has to kill the avatar of nature, it's probably gonna be quite difficult. Uh, but then again, Bloodstorm is more generally about the secondary objectives, so um, it might not be a problem at all. Now we have Daniel and Arne. So Daniel is bringing Dread Elves, and Arne is bringing Kingdom of Aquitaine. Um, we have a Dread Prince on foot with Pet Weapon Serious Heart, who's going to dish out, uh, let me count, 5, 6, 8 attacks, at strength 5, uh, with a plus 1 to wound. That is uh, quite juicy indeed. Um, Essence of Mithril gives you a 2 up armor save. This guy will uh, grind away units um, as long as he doesn't get killed himself, or his unit doesn't get broken. Uh, 23 selection space. I think I would have made them a little bit bigger and then just sacrifice some Dread Knights, maybe. Because um, I would just run these Dread Knights a bit cheaper. I understand that in the entire thing you need something that can pass through terrain. Um, but I I don't know if the Stalker standard is the solution here. Uh, but uh, we will see. Dread Knights on the charge will do quite some damage with their lances. Raptor Chariot as well. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's it's quite interesting. I Personally, I don't really like Dread Knights anymore after playing with them a couple of times. Uh, with them being so incredibly vulnerable to anything that comes their way. Um, and then you support it with Kingdom of Aquitaine. Um, yeah, I, I would have left out the Dread Knights because the Kingdom already gives you the, the cavalry that you need. But then again, Dread Knights are also really cool, so why wouldn't you play them, right? Um, the Kingdom of Aquitaine list, this is the first other uh, artillery weapon that we see. I think they were a little bit concerned about very big units, like with Vermin Swarm or stuff. I think the biggest units we've seen so far were the Goblin Rebel. <laughs> um, but I was mostly thinking about the Imperial Guard. I don't know what the AP is on the shots of the Trebuchet, but if it's like AP1 or maybe even AP2, then the, <laughs> these great weapon guys are going to have a tough time against this uh, this list. Then we have Eric and Arjan, and I think that is, no, it's not nearly the last, but we have Sylvan Elves and Dread Elves, so Sylvan Elves brings a Druid with Druidism. Uh, Druidism generally goes for a bit of a longer game. Uh, Sylvan Archers, uh, Heath Riders with Heath Hunters, no ambush. <laughs> a big unit of Kestrel Knights, that is quite an interesting choice uh, because that is, and you cannot use your musician to do some reforms next to it. I think this unit is going to surprise people because it can hit you from uh, places where you didn't expect. 
some sentinels um, for some extra shooting so 20 shots 24 shots i think 25 fish but um that's uh quite decent actually especially against stuff like uh, dread elves the dread elves will evaporate over time eventually paired up with dread elves for some combat uh, potential the 18 judicators are gonna punch way above their weight uh quite likely Selection spears are gonna hit everything in combination with the crippling frost guy. He's gonna go into the spears. He might also go into the judicators actually, um, just for that juicy battle focus on the judicators. Then the judicators really are gonna gonna just kill everything that they touch. Hunting chariot, amazing piece at these uh, point levels, and I would have definitely included it if I were to go for a good dread off list. The last team we have is Peter and Erik. So Peter and Erik are playing Ogre Khans and Warriors of the Dark Gods. Uh, so Ogre Khans is apparently quite popular. Um, this is the first list though that brings some big blocks of Ogres, uh, which is also a solid choice, like the five Brutus banner of discipline with a Khan. Uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. And then the mercenary vets with plate armor, Vanguard, uh, great weapons. This is also going to be uh, quite tough to beat. Um, I think the only thing that might be able to beat it is the Judicator. <laughs> um, so yeah, my prediction would be that if the Judicators land up into the Mercenary Vets, that the Mercenary Vets are going to lose that combat. Uh, but maybe you disagree with me. Um, luckily, they have some bombardiers to take care of stuff like big units of uh, adjudicators. Then it's backed up with the Warriors of the Dark Gods with another wizard. So this is going to be a wizard apprentice on occultism with the magical heirloom for two juicy spells. Just throw all your dice at it and hope that your opponent has some juicy targets for you. Warriors, just vanilla warriors with this art banner is also quite solid I would say. Um, the question is whether you want to spend I like the, the cheapest favor is Pride, which is 46 points for this unit. Do you want to spend 46 points? So two warriors basically to get minimized discipline on your block, or do you not? Um, generally, my consideration there is that I would want it, but I can also imagine that you just want extra bodies. Um, then a Forsaken one, <laughs> this is just an insane beast at these point levels. Um, and then some warrior knights. These, these have also been proven to me to be just quite reliable at scoring. So I think that is quite a nifty choice there. Um, maybe I would have wanted to give the sorcerer a bit more protection, but then again, where are you going to get the points at 1500 points? So that is going to be the entire overview of the different armies. Which one has your favorite, um, or which one is your favorite? Um, which one is going to get your vote for the best army at the event? I think my choice would be just for fluff reasons the orcs and the goblins, or the orc list and the goblin list. That's going to be a lot of fun. I hope they really put everything together in the army and <laughs> make full use of the animosity rules and, and everything, uh, just to remind you of the good old. Uh, fun and goodness of, uh, for example, 6th edition, um, where Orcs still had a lot of animosity trouble. Yeah, with that, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and if you are participating in the event, see you on Saturday. And otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then next time.